What a weekend that has just gone up past of uh, racing uh, throughout the country. What a weekend of racing in uh, the uh, capital of uh, KZN, Peter Marsburg. We were at Hollywood Bets uh, Scottsville for the annual sprint events. And a happy lad didn't disappoint. A print crow quote didn't disappoint. Uh, just the whole vibe was just uh, tremendous. And of course, uh, yesterday we saw the championship chasing Mr. Faree at his very best. Five out of the ten races he won and some of them in an eye-catching fashion. But let us know what you thought was a highlight of the weekend. Quid pro quo, happy lad, or Richard Ferris, uh, five winners. That's uh, via our X handle or our WhatsApp number. Right, we've got a meeting that uh, will uh, certainly bring us to, uh, down to earth with a thud because it does look on paper as if it is going to be an exotic player's a dream. And, of course, if we need anybody to have us uh, get the right ones, it is Mr. Marie. First of all, your bullishness about uh, Happy Lad. Not the way we expected, but I think we saw another side of a true champion. Yeah, I am a Happy Lad, but uh, the performance by Lucky Lad was... Luck, lucky Lad, <laughs> of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Indeed. what a win. Uh, great days racing, Cecil. Great, wow. fantastic. Wow. I mean, Sean Terry's on another level, isn't he? Well, and I said to him in an interview last Thursday... It is that time of the year again. Godspeed, and it was like he says, thank you very much. It was all going down to plan. But nonetheless, Tuesday, let's have a look at uh, what's happening on a Tuesday. Now, this is a uh, meeting where we've got a work riders to start uh, the uh, meeting. And uh, that is going to be the first leg of uh, the uh, biopod. All fields are big. And uh, races two, three, and uh, four, to a lesser extent, have got first-timers that are in uh, the betting. So let's just uh, get straight into that uh, first race of the afternoon. And what is the best bet in computer form is actually your favorite, and that is a two-year-old. 17 again at 15 to 20, Fabian Abib, with the services of Siabongam Kumbuz, the number one gold agent. Once again, Savannah retains right Valyajo. That is on uh, the five to two second favorite number nine. Uh, Belisava is at nine to two, 10 to one, and uh, better bar those. Right, the two-year-old is 17 again. Yeah, now this is the best bet for many. On uh, Debo was nibbled at 5 to 1 into 28 to uh, 10. Beaten by the Navy Lark, but there was a lot of greenness. And I do recall Savannah actually riding a Valley Agile, Val Jalo, rather. And uh, that was uh, with Mr. Uh, Chama Bayer aboard. And he really did uh, show them all a clean <laughs> pair of heels. Now, Cecil, I don't know if you recall, but. Last time, Gold Agent was a 5 to 10 favorite in yes. that race. Yes. And we warned the viewers. We said um, she's far too short in the market. She mm -hmm. can win, but her price is incorrect. I'm going to state the same thing about this favorite. Yes. Uh, it was a lovely debut, very promising. She actually spoiled her chances at the gate. She mm -hmm. didn't get a clean break. But we have to read into the fact that she was beaten by the Navy Lock. The Navy Lock had a 15 odd runs to break. Yeah. Her maiden, very moderate uh, sort, limited fully. Yes. But yes, she can show more. She can build on that effort, and she should go close to winning. I don't think there'll be much separating herself and Gold Agent once again. But I'm also including. Take note, number two, Golden Argo is now fitted with Alamites. She is a gin strike, and herself and Belisiva are very close on form. So I've gone all four runners. I think this favorite is too short in the market. If you want to back her, wait until race time. All right, so that is a thorough look at uh, race number one. But uh, Mr. Marie, the word is a ca caution there. The operative word is caution. All right, so hopefully we've negotiated the, the first leg of the bipod uh, quite successfully and maybe even a double up if you followed the uh, recommendations of Mr. Marie. Well, the first time is first time as galore in a race uh, number uh, two. And uh, we start off uh, with what was uh, the uh, favorite overnight, a very weak favorite, and that was uh, the Seven Kamati River. Well related, it is a Vercingetrix, a daughter of Vercingetrix out of a second empire mare. Venus Rising racing in the colors of the breeders. That is an advocate in partnership with Mr. Tony Peter. Calvin Abib gets a ride aboard uh, the Seven Kamati River. Others that uh, looked to have some sort of a chance, according to the bookmakers, as well, the 15. Take your place with second, a favorite 11 to 2, has had the five tries for St. John Gray. Jeff Seister gets uh, the ride. Now, in terms of uh, pedigrees, Mr. Marie, I guess this is where you come into your element. Uh, get three, Boston, Glory, 
sister to uh, well performed a golf smack to owned by the same owners, Stu Pedigree is the trainer. Yes, yeah, Cecil. Now, Gobsmacked actually won her, force, her first four races yes. on the bounce. Yes. Including a grade two. Now, you omitted her other half sister, Mighty Ha, the grade one winning filly. Oh. Mighty yes. Ha actually beat Celtic Sea in the Alan Robertson. I actually believe, uh, I heard something. You had told me about Lawrence's first graded winner, which was uh, Hero's Honor. Yes. And his first. Rated winner in uh, KZN, I believe, was Mighty High. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I had a wonderful one weekend. Say. Yes. Um, Cecil, you know, if you open a, a computer form um, in the Western Cape, yes. every, every unraced runner has a comment. Unfortunately, we've got no help from the trainers on the high felt. But um, I always have a question because everybody seems to have this thing, or oh, he's uh, stuck us away or whatever. Uh, rather you don't get a comment and uh, just uh, go by conjecture and wait for the markets rather than uh, get a situation where you're going to be told, oh, yes, yes, that could be a uh, runner and uh, send, uh, run stone off. So, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. just I think Cecil, it's a very tight one. Huh? It is. It is. But, um, you know, we're sitting here in the dark a day before the meeting yes. and I'm meant to be tipping a bar put in a place accumulator and I've got absolutely no idea who's fancied and who's not, yes. who's ready and who's going to uh, have be having an educational run. But anyway, that's the reason I've gone wide. I've yes. got numbers one, Animat, what's it, Aminato. Yes. Uh, her dam won twice over 1,200. She's drawn towards the outside. I went number three, Basting Glory. We touched on her. Yes. I added in numbers 14 and 15. Springsteen is drawn one. Now, I don't know where they're going to go mm -hmm. because uh, of the setup of the, the rails. So um, I got a feeling they're going to spread right across the track, break into two groups. Um, so she's gone in. And the one of the race runners with the best form is certainly number 15, Take Your Place. Now, Cecil, listen to this. She actually ran in a race that was co contested by Rodeo Drive and Katiwe's Destiny. They both won the next start. And Rodeo Drive, R Rodeo Drive ran second in the Alan Robertson. Very good, sir. Yes. So numbers 1, 3, 14, and 15. I hope I survive, Cecil. Thank you so much. That is a PA. It's been up. The outlay, 576 Rand. Be mindful of the start of race two, 10 minutes to one. Well, there have been lengthy previews, but it's just so many first time and so many questions and not too many answers. So Daryl has actually done his best to, to guide us. And I think he's just given us a template. You may add, you may subtract uh, as uh, we go through the exotics. The next one is at uh, the pick six, which starts with the champion apprentice of the season. And that is Melissa Lacacetti, a maiden juvenile plate. And that'll be over the 1,200 meters. Betting at this stage as the uh, number 12 C war for first time, a well-related at uh, 33 to 10. Number three, uh, chill, chill bomb rather, is at 5 to 1. 5 to 1 is the 16 of Alieva. Number 14, a spy story, 7 to 1, 8 to 1 and uh, better bar those quoted runners. So the 16 Valieva comes off that uh, six length uh, to a form line you saw, spoke about not so long ago, the Rodeo Drive uh, form line. Uh, she let me down last time, Matt. And I see SK has jumped ship. Okay. So, yeah, I'm uncertain about her. Cecil, there's quite a few well-bred horses yes. of here. Namely, uh, number... Sea Wolf, number 13. Number three, Chili Bomb. Okay. And Sea Wolf. Number 12, yeah. Number 12. Now, listen to this. They're actually both related to Alan Robinson, grade one winning fillies. Okay. So, Sea Wolf's obviously uh, related to Vernici. Vernici? Vernici, yes. Vernici, yes. yes. Now, she beat a uh, filly trained by Sean Terry. Yeah, that was... Owned, uh, owned by Mr. Funny Cake. I'll and tell you third, what. It, uh, it, it, I was actually looking. Yeah, go on. And third was War of Athena. I, said, I saw that. I saw that. That's, I actually took a screenshot to say, wow, look at that form line. Okay. Yes. And then Chili Bomb is a uh, half brother to Sweet Pepper. Yes. Who also won the grade one Alan Robinson. Yes. So I put them both into the bar pots, but in the PA, I've just got numbers 12 and 15. Now listen to this, Cecil. Yes. Number twelve is currently forty. Uh, sorry, number fifteen is currently forty Ecstatic to one. Ecstatic green, by the way. Ecstatic green. Yes. That's a jest. Sorry. Number fifteen is 
currently 40 to 1 stalwart yes now last time i tried a bit further um i wasn't really impressed with that run but go back to his penultimate start over a thousand meters he ran in a race um where fire attack won right now fire attacks obviously won the nursery since then cosmic speed ran second cosmic speed won and then ran second, second. in the gold medallion then you've got ready to fire who got touched off by a chocolate soldier is yeah. that right yes and yes. sunset riots who's come out and won since then i don't believe this horse should be 40 to 1. Uh, listen i don't know how fancy the first timers are but of the race runners i'm certainly leaning towards number 15 stalwart i'm keen to see how he goes as his debut um since being gelded you know i love it when you actually sell your uh, your, your your product in the way that you do <laughs> because basically there's usually a lot of a thought not that you never think about anything else uh, on the preview show but uh, you've really really made a case and 15 stalwart my kind of prize daryl marie that is at 40 to 1 that is the race number three Well, we've got a lot of form to work with in a race and number four. That is the two o'clock off time to the first jackpot. This is a champion breed of the season. Vilka Bostrift and the Morris Fontaine a maiden plate. And it's over the thousand meters, just the one first time. And let's go through the betting. And it's number five, What a Lucy. Back over this minimum trip, and that is at uh, 22 to 10. Co 22 to 10 uh, co with favorite with a 14, a green, a lightning. Now, as far as the 11 goes, uh, Johnny Appleseed, that is at 7 to 2, 7 to 1, and a better bar, though. As we continue, this is a preview for a Tuesday racing. Proud of brought to you by uh, Betway, and of course, you can get in touch with us with our. Uh, Handle, X handle, and our WhatsApp number, which just shows at the beginning of each insert. Now, Mr. Marie, at least uh, not too many first timers uh, to uh, uh, test the grey matter here. Johnny Appleseed is at 33 to 10. The favourite is Water Lucy with the green lightning, also 22 to 10. Okay, let's touch on the first timer. Thanks to Fabian Habib. He said, showing nice work, if not to green, place chance. That's with regards to number 13, Tiger Storm. Yeah, interesting race, Cecil. <laughs> Um, I think the improver in the race has to be Johnny Appleseed. Now, the pre-race comments on debut were very, very upbeat. He was fancy to go very close on debut and everything went wrong. He had a lot of excuses. Um, I'm willing to put a line through that effort. I mean, Mr. Tony Peters got a lot of stock back home and he knows what he's dealing with. And if he's expecting us to go close on debut and it runs such a dismal race, um, you, you have to believe that they way better than that effort. So I think coming back to a thousand, we'll see marked improvement from number 11, Johnny Appleseed. Now he's the two old Colt. The three old filly in the race um, with the obvious form is number five, What's a Lucy. Now, her form line of her last start it hasn't really shone to date. I think there have been four runners, all four unplaced. But she has a filly that's come into, into this race uh, very, very fit, Cecil. Mm. She's having her peak run. I always like uh, Lucky's fillies at the Vol. Um, she's very quick. And she could she could uh, keep rolling. I think um, she's... She's a live wire over here. She finished well clear of the balance of the field last time out, just finding one to good on that occasion. And she also comes back to a thousand. And then the other office run is the two old filly, uh, Green Lightning, number 14. I think over a thousand meters, she just needs to break better because last time out, she came out a little bit sluggishly. Yeah, she's got a chance. A little bit uh, wary about that form line. So I'm leaning towards numbers five and 11. 11 being first choice. Um, yes, with number healthy respect for number 14, Green Lightning. Thank you so much. There's a jackpot, 5, 11 and 14 confirmed in the first leg of the first jackpot. 180 rand is the total outlay. The maiden plate over the 1,000 meters, 2 o'clock is the off time. Okay, so generally now the gist of it all is that uh, the uh, championship seeking Richard Free will get to 400 winners before the season is out, let alone uh, the uh, 345, 344 to e 334 rather to equal. 
335 to beat the record, which is now about nine or so after yesterday's exploits. But uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, well, well deserved. And of course, uh, well deserved all the connections who supported him. Now, you're talking about Lucky Hudalakis at the Vol. 5 to 2 is the favorite of his charge, the 7 Kinshin Sar. Number 2, Quick Trip, 3 to 1, 9 to 2. Number 4, Long Sword. Number 5, Stormy Seas was in uh, good health and a uh, good form, 6 to 1. 8 and better by the Stormy Seas. I always had as a 1200 uh, horse, but that Ray has really gotten to know this horse well. Two wins out of the last uh, five outings aboard. And of course, well done to him and uh, his, uh, is it yes. October morn? Yeah. Yeah. Stingray. Stingray, yes. <laughs> yeah, Cecil, so this was funny enough. I went for Stormy Seas in his penultimate starts uh, when beaten two and a half lengths by Quick Trip. Sure. And then I brassed him next time out. <laughs> what was the case? And uh, he came and uh, found me. Um, yeah. Uh, you can see on that quick uh, trip run, there's very little separating three of them, I think. Stormy Seas, uh, quick, quick Trip, and King Shin Shah. Yes. King Shin Shah actually flew out the pens on that occasion. Uh, he was drawn to Stallgate number one. He ended up hard against the outside running rail, found some interference, got very tight because Moosey moved, moved, moved across and on cue. Who actually came out and ran second in her next start. So I've got respect for all three of those runners. Um, I don't think there'll be much separating the three of them once again. But I'm leaning towards Longsword. Cecil last time out beyond Sabre, what was it? Sabre Strike. Yes. That was a very, very competitive lineup. It was over 1450. I'm of the opinion this horse doesn't stay. In his penultimate start, up there straight. At Turfentine over 1160. He wasn't beaten for speed. This is his first run over a thousand meters. My only concern is who's drawn on the outside that can actually give him some cover and pull him through because it looks like the pace is more towards the inside with Quick Trip and King Shin Shah. The horse that could give him some cover is Nkandla Gold. Um, I'm hoping the race works out well for Longsword. If it does, I think you will take a lot of beating, but I would have been much more bullish if he was drawn middle inside. But I am leaning towards him over King Shin Shah and then respect for Stormy Seas and obviously Quick Trip. All right. They always say uh, whatever Gavin chooses to ride or what these big boys uh, choose to ride, there's a reason why they've gone for them, which uh, may not be too obvious unless you dissect like Mr. Marie. So that is long sword at the each way selection there, or at least the tentative first choice for Daryl in race five. In between takes, the conversation continues with our uh, uh, much revered uh, tipster here as to what the performance of uh, Saturday was. But uh, certainly some lots to take away from that. And of course, I'm sure you've got uh, things that we haven't even touched on. Please do share them with us via our X handle or indeed our WhatsApp number. This is uh, looking ahead at to Tuesday Racing at the Vol. We're on the old track, and this is proudly brought to you by Betway. Now, let's have a look at uh, the uh, next uh, race, where Putin's Promise has been in very good health, and it is uh, Mr. Rekorbus through his string as well, and retains the services of Smunger after a win under second, four to one. Number six, uh, Viva de Janeiro, also good uh, informed stable of uh, final Broncos, nine to two. Nine to two, the uh, nine laughing William. The one Mocha Frappe, 10 to 1, 10 to 1, about numbers uh, 3, Leeson, and also at 10 to 1. Here's a, an interesting one, and I'm sure it's going to come up uh, from my man on the right. Pierre Stratum, Joey Soma, at the Vol, have our own toast. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's going to be any salt and pepper today uh -huh. or tomorrow after uh -huh. the Vol. Um, yeah, Cecil, I think uh, she'll be given a chance to be running on. Maybe this race is to bring her on over something a little bit further in time to come let's see how she goes interesting of yeah gavin lorena uh booted viva de janeiro to victory last time out he jumped ship and he's now on miss candace dawson's number laughing william number nine she laughing holds william. it in right high regard eh? yeah now barring his penultimate start for laughing william he's actually been very consistent you can see he's clearly off a capable mark so mm -mm. i think he can certainly feature um must give you a little bit of confidence that gavin's chosen him 
over Viva de Janeiro says, oh. Now I'm going to be for once going to engage your conspiracy theories. <laughs> Chase is doing a lot of writing for Farney, though. Yes, I he is. I must just say. He is. Yeah. Uh-huh. But do you think Farney wouldn't, I you wouldn't, think Farney wouldn't got, have offered Gavin the right? I've said a little bit. <laughs> I've indulged you. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got Putin's promise. Now, he's obviously in cracking form. Yes. Last time out, that form line is staying, standing up well. I mean, Zenobia's uh, gold. Yes. One from there. Vava Vegas, one from there. After hours, got touched off running second. He's in good form. Samanga knows him. Stable's hot. I like his chances. But the one I'm leaning towards is number three, Leeson. Four. Three. Leeson. Number four. Oh, at least, no, no, I thought I saw something else. Sorry, oh, that's sorry. Darren Burris's Clarkson. Oh, so you read my mind where yeah. I went wrong. Yeah. Okay. okay. Darren's tipping number four, Clarkson. Oh, okay. I like my the look apologies. of number three, Leeson. Um, Cecil, this horse is actually one from one over the course and distance, yes. right? But his latest victory happened to be up the Vol Strait over 1,500 meters. I think he's got a liking for the Vol Strait. Uh-huh. Craig will be giving him a little bit of a chance. He'll be running on. If it's not on the sharp side for him, I think um, he could spring a little bit of an upset at around about 12 to 1. Let's see how it goes. Darren likes Clarkson. I like Leeson. If you like the sound of that, maybe double float the quartet. Okay, so Leeson is at 10 to 1 and Clarkson is at 16 to 1. And dare I say, the stable is in form with a small string. That is the Robbie Sage stable. And we saw that form line franked by another Robbie Sage runner who had been in the race, the brief. Came out okay, it was closer to Mars Ariano. But uh, yeah, maybe you're onto something there. Thank you so, so much, you guys, for that value. Three and four box exactors, uh, double flow to box swingers. I think we could be in for a rich afternoon. Okay, so we're getting on to race number seven. And uh, the racing, whilst it started off uh, initially, it's scratchy and then lots of first timers. We are improving with each race, gets more and more competitive, and race seven is a case in point, where your favorite is a recent uh, runner-up in a very nice race of three. Why is that? And that is a co-favorite of 92 with now number nine fully loaded, and the 10 Kings Express all at 92. 11 to 2, number eight, <coughs> excuse me, Brave Viking, number one at Paisley Park. Good, good improvement last time out, Paisley Park. Six to one along with uh, the six at Saab Bomber, six to one. Just before I hand over to our man, it is a, a form update about Wise Act. Last Thursday on the standside track in a very competitive graduation plate. Uh, four to one was the SP. Finished uh, 0 0.75 lengths behind the best handicapped horse in the race. And that was the Africa House. So that was a three quarters of a length behind the Africa House over a distance of 1,400. They go over the 1,400 and they're on the stand side track of the ball. If he puts in a similar effort to that, Cecil, you have to believe that the 9 to 2 has got a lot of value about it. I'll tell you why. Um, you touched on the fact that the, the, the white... Um, Sorry, the Africa House yeah. was slung in on that occasion, and yes. he was. Wazak is a 99, and uh, the Africa House was, was a net 102. So right. he should have actually been in receipt of a kilo and a half. Yeah. He gave him three kilograms. Yeah. So he was four and a half kilograms out at the weights with the Africa House. So you have to believe that he ran above his rating. He's very fit. The only question mark is he is be being backed up very soon. Mm -hmm. Does this race come too soon for him? If it doesn't, and he puts in a similar effort to that, I think he is the horse to beat. And I do believe at 92, you should have a little bit of a tickle. But if you like his chances, go have a look at number seven, Emporium. Mm -hmm. Now, he's one from one over the course and distance. Mm -hmm. And who did he beat on that occasion? Wazak. Wazak, yes. He yes, beat yes. Wazak by a short head. A but he's three weight. kilograms better off yes. at the weight. Yes. So if you like Wazak, Emporium at 12 to 1 can't hurt you either. So I'm leaning towards uh, those two. But I've got, to respe I've got respect for a good few others. The likes of Brave Viking, Paisley Park, uh, Fully Loaded. They all have to be considered. Did you mention Brave King? Yes, Brave, Brave King. Yeah. Viking, okay. And uh, that's it. And what about, uh, obviously, the likes of Duke of Sussex would need the runner? I believe so. Because this is his home. This, this is, is, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, he grows another leg up here, but okay. uh, Mr. Zach is nowhere to be seen. Okay. He's on number two, Laguna Verde. Okay. All right. So first choice would be Wise Active reproducing last Thursday, but uh, respectful Emporium. 100%. Thank you so much, Mr. Marie. There it is. Brave Viking is Darren Burroughs' win selection, and I said it would not be out of turn. That is race seven, as I said. The racing just seems to get better as we get to the end. As we round off our uh, preview for our first uh, local meeting of this a uh, new week, that is Tuesday Racing at the Vol on the stand side track. Please do get in touch with us. Give us your impressions about the weekend gone by. And it is only getting better all around the country. It is uh, going to be a race eight that rounds off proceedings on Tuesday. Off at an odd time of 16 at 28. And this is a champion also of the season. Give me another merit rate at 74 handicap over the 1,200 meters. Munchkin, that is the local horse number one, is at 33 to 10, 9 to 2, number nine, Walled Garden. The ever consistent nine year old 16, Samoa, 8 to 1. Number uh, 17, 15, rather, Dancing Dora, 17 to 2, it is 10 to 1, and uh, better about those. Well, what can you say before you give us your thoughts about uh, the Evergreen Samo, Mr. Marie? Yeah, shame. She's really done the stable proud. Um, but Cecil, you know, whenever Gavin's a border, a border, I know Samanga has done extremely well on yes. her, but... Uh, Gavin and her really have got something special. Just yeah. a bit like uh, what we saw yesterday. Uh, what is that? The uh, Crawford Rick sauce and Richard Vivi. And we had a laugh about yes, it. Yes, yeah. Uh, it's uh, the Philly, it's, number one. Yeah. yeah. Whenever he gets on, you know that it's uh, <laughs> Pepe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cecil, now Munchkin, since they've ridden him with restraint, I mean, he's really found good form. Uh, last time out, I thought he was a little bit unlucky. Um, you know, Craig actually didn't even get a chance to give him a smack or uh, some inc encouragement uh, from the saddle. Uh, the winner just got first run on him, but he was closing in steadily. So now he goes the 1200. He just needs to settle, and I think he's in cracking form. So I like his chances. Um, she's my captain. Mm -hmm. Yes, of she's course, yesterday, captain. yes. Um, then uh, you have to have a look at um, Walled Garden. Now, Walled Garden, Mr. Soma has always said from day one, this this horse has got ability. Yes. Um, he comes with his issues. He's very likely raced, but you know, he's been he's been um, consistent in his last two starts. Right up there, uh, Muzi now gets the ride. Um, yeah, he's going to go very close once again. Cecil, Lulu's boy interests me. Over I was here. looking at that Number handicap four. rating has gone down. Huh? Yeah. Now, we've touched on Quibus' stable there in deadly form. Oh, currently. gone up and now it's slowly. I think, mm. I think a thousand meters is too quick for him. He likes to to get into a rhythm up front. Over a thousand meters, he's, he's pressed from the jump. Over 1,200 with striker. If he gets a clean break and he just allows him to take a breather, I can see him reversing the form with several of here. Look at his course in distance form. Yes, nine runs. Three, Three wins mm. and a second from nine outings. What price is he, Cecil? He is currently at uh, 14 to 1. Yeah, for me, I think you have to have a little bit of a nibble on him before but Lulu's that, boy. Now, all this time, how long it is? Uh, 300 days. Why has the handicap gone up? Has Samar gone up? There's been the odds muttering of a decent run, but it seems to have just gone up. Yeah, well, he did get the, the four pounds for winning, and since then it stayed on the same mark. Yeah, which is sad, huh? Yeah, Was Cecil, really don't worry. Striker, Striker you know, Striker no, likes to win the last race. Uh, we've seen him with Whirly Whirly nursing a horse along. Don't don't be surprised to see a similar sort of ride with Lulu's boy. Well, well Lulu's boy, well, if anybody can get Will Express to come through and win after all that time, we have to be <laughs> very scared. But uh, thank you so, so much, Adele. We look forward to a great week of racing ahead and uh, more feature stuff as uh, the season goes on. Thank you so much. That is uh, Walled Garden, a selection from Daryl Marie at uh, nine two. That is, in fact, Darren Burrows. And Mr. Marie goes with a four. Lulu's boy, you guys have been playing games with me today. <laughs> so it is Lulu's boy for Daryl and a walled garden for Darren.